Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of TA with MK. My name is McKay, and in today's episode, we're just going to give you a quick market update, as I have not done that for a couple of days. Um, just kind of discuss the SPX and its little sister, the SPX or S&P 500 E-mini futures. Just kind of an overall, you know, update or overview of what we kind of see the market potentially um, setting up to do over the coming hours and days. Which then, of course, will lead us to the Bitcoin chart with some short-term time frame updates um, and analysis, as well as maybe some midterm stuff. Um, maybe what to expect over the course of the end of this week, maybe going into next week. And then we'll top it off by talking a little bit about the Bitcoin dominance chart as it's nearing 40%, which is a level that weeks ago I spoke about in some of my videos, just mentioning kind of, hey, be cautious uh, with your altcoins as Bitcoin dominance approaches that level. So we're going to kind of discuss that and the scenarios that that can lead to as it relates to Bitcoin and the, and the altcoins that you may or may not be holding. And I know a lot of you that watch the videos are not subscribed, so if you could please just do me a huge, huge favor and go ahead and uh, you know like and subscribe before we jump into this. I also want to mention that there's a link in the description, as always, to my Telegram group. You, you're welcome to hit that. It's completely free. Come in there and you can get more up-to-date analysis. Um, there's also quite a few members in there that are pretty active. Uh, I mean, it's a fairly new group overall, but we've got a few guys in there that post you know, pretty frequently. Uh, it's a good place to come in and ask questions, get answers a little bit quicker than maybe posting a, a question on one of my videos. And so again, if you guys are enjoying my content, please remember to like and subscribe and let's go. It's T.A. with M.K. It's T.A. with M.K. All right, let's not waste any time. Let's jump right into it. This is the SPX or the S&P 500. This is the daily chart. And we've been talking about this falling wedge that we've been in for you know, quite some time, ever since the top back in early January, so the beginning of the year. And we've been kind of, you know, following it as at least at least ever since the bottom over here at around, you know, mid-June. We've been discussing that it would make sense from a statistical standpoint ever since this little bear trap where price lost this lower trend line but then got back inside and flipped it back as support. That it would make sense, you know, that we would travel up to the top of the wedge. You know, that's kind of what happens if you zoom out and just think about things in terms of, okay, if we can be patient and not try to predict that it happens within the next day or two or even a few weeks or even a month, you know, even on a small time frame, when something like this happens where you've been inside of a pattern and you lose a major trend line, but then you regain it, price action has a habit of going the opposite way, clear up into the top of, you know, the top of the pattern because this becomes a big bear trap a lot of people would have went short assuming the market was headed straight to hell and, and luckily it didn't go to hell and you know here we are from that ha that time that happened in mid-june to here we are in you know the end of august and just recently about uh, a week ago or so 10 days ago we hit the top of this trend line or very very close you could draw that trend line a little bit differently and and make the argument that it hasn't touched it yet uh, for example, I could drag it up a little bit higher and, you know, we could say, hey, it hasn't touched it yet. But for all intents and purposes, I would say that's pretty valid. We'd also mentioned um, if we turn on the moving averages, let me turn on these uh, these real quick, that the 200 simple moving average was acting as resistance right there. You can see we wicked up and touched it. That's this yellow line on my chart. You also had this major zone that we've been speaking about for some time, which I had marked as a orange horizontal line. So you had that resistance. We didn't speak about this one, but from the last swing high up here to our low back here, you can kind of take, okay, what's an area of common, I guess, you know, ret a retrace, or in this case would be a, I guess, relief bounce. What's a common area to see a rejection? Well, the golden pocket lies within the 618 to the 0 0.65. Uh, we did wick above that just ever so slightly, but that's confluence. Um, you know, so we just had everything coming together at the same time. We had horizontal resistance. We had trend line resistance. We had the major 200 MA resistance. And sure enough, we got rejected, which to me was no surprise. Now, does that mean the end all be all? And are we headed back to the bottom of the pattern or could we break out? Well, time will tell. But, but statistically speaking, you know, in order for us to break out of this, we got to take this level by level. And you can see that after we got rejected at this zone, that now we're back below and contending with this zone, where it was previously resistance, support, uh, support, 
a little bit of resistance back in here. So this little zone here that we're currently in has also been an area that has been significant. Now we are at the top of it, but once again, the question is over the next day or two, are we gonna put in a lower high even if we do pump before ultimately rolling over, or are we just gonna roll over now? Or options, you know, plan C, I guess, would be that we break out. Now, until we break out and flip about 4,300 as support on a daily closing basis, you know, because we did get up to 4,300, we wicked above, but ultimately we rolled over. Until we flip that as support on a daily closing basis, we have to assume that any relief rally we have is just that and that only, a little relief bounce before rolling over. So assuming that that's what's going to happen, you know, which is what I think from a statistical standpoint is more likely, what would that lead Bitcoin's price action to potentially look like? So now we're on the Bitcoin daily chart. Nothing too crazy to mention here that I haven't already mentioned in recent videos, but just kind of for a quick recap, Cap, you had this breakdown that happened back in early June and price action right now is basically ever since then has been creating what we would refer to as a bear flag right if you flipped this upside down you know this would be the pull this would be the flag but you know even if you want to not call it that it's been a more or less in an ascending you know or not ascending but a, a rising wedge or in this case a rising channel right and by all means and purposes we did break lower out of that recently and on lower time frames, we're making a smaller version of what we've been in, flag, bear flag, right? Well, I've been mentioning all along ever since the breakdown of the wedge that the measured move is actually down here. You have an aggressive measured move at about 18,000, just under 18,600 on up to about 19,500. So that's kind of the zone or the area or the measured move that I would expect price to reach at some point. Now, the question is, do we get a bounce beforehand? You know, also statistically speaking, that would make sense. Price action never goes one way, you know, all at the same time. You have ups and downs, right? Whether you're going up, you have it up, you know, impulse wave up, retrace, impulse wave up. Same thing on the way down, impulse wave down, usually a recovery bounce and an impulse wave down. So do we get a little impulse wave back up first before eventually rolling over, sometimes towards the end of the month and finally hitting the measure move? You know, that's just something you kind of have to wait and see. But how would we validate this? Well, on a daily closure, or especially something like a four hour closure above about 21,000, we'll say 800 in my opinion at least, then we would likely be headed up to at the very least, and this is kind of where I would expect the major, major resistance to be if we break out, would be somewhere between 24,400 and 22,600. So right here would be an area that would make sense for a rejection. The, the higher end of that, if for some reason we had enough momentum, would be maybe the underside of this wedge and this orange zone of daily resistance up around 23,800. In either case, it would ultimately be a high, a low, and a lower high, you know? So we would still have to expect at that point that we're gonna roll over and most likely the next low is going to be a lower low than this low. Now. Do we get the relief bounce or do we just roll over from here? Well, like I said, statistically speaking, the relief bounce is what I've been eyeing my, you know, leaning towards, but it doesn't mean it has to happen. Now, the lower end of this, which has been 20,800 acting as support, which was major resistance back, uh, let's see, hold on, where are we at right now? Down here, sorry. Uh, it was support back here, I should say. Uh, resistance back here. It's not a super strong area, so I was pretty surprised to see um, Bitcoin hold up there so well. But if we lose 20,800 on a four hour closure, um, that would probably be enough to me at least. In that case, I would expect us to just go ahead and plummet our way down to at least 20K. 20K is a psychological number, so somewhere between 19,800 and 20K, you could expect a small bounce. Before rolling over, in my opinion, and I think we would visit somewhere in the lower 19,000s. Now, I did mention we were going to look at the e-mini future, so we'll do that super, super quick. This is the daily chart. And really all I'm eyeing for on this is you had this area of resistance up here that we got rejected at at about 4,300, you know. Same as the SPX, of course, because this is just its futures trading. Only difference with this chart is that it trades 24-7 Monday through Friday. And so it does things after hours um, that then have to be updated on the regular SPX chart when it opens up the following day, right? Well, right now you can see that we already have this confirmed, you know, lower high than back here. I shouldn't say confirmed, but the point is, is that it got rejected at that major zone of resistance. We're looking to see within this swing here, within this smaller swing, 
are we going to be able to break above 4300 and flip it as support because that's the only way you could expect any sort of a push higher out of stocks and then of course you know bitcoin would follow the more likely scenario which is just why we'd be waiting for tomorrow to see what the regular s p 500 does would be that this now zone here which was previously resistance support right not as strong uh resist uh, sorry uh, support there not as strong as the zone above it but still strong if we get rejected here and you lose this level down here at about 4100 we'll say and that turns into resistance at that point you've confirmed this is a lower high and then price action is more or less just going to begin to make a falling wedge. And then it's just a matter of seeing how low it goes before it, you know, finds actual support and breaks it out of the wedge and so on and so forth. And then you just kind of look for the next then high. What's going to, is this going to be a higher low, you know, before you push higher and maybe go even higher? Or would it just confirm a, a lower high? And these are the things that we're going to be keeping track of over the next, you know, days and weeks, really. But I just want to point out that. Unless we can break back above at least 4,200 first tomorrow, and then the bigger area being 4,300, you have to assume that we're going to put in a lower high, and then at that point, the next low would likely be lower than 4,100. So if you're trying to time, say, shorting a coin or something, you would look for, you know, if tomorrow's daily closure, especially if tomorrow's daily, you know, so I guess it would be the weekly closure essentially, closes below 4,200. At that point, it wouldn't, you know, 100% confirm a lower high, but it wouldn't be a good look. Uh, going into the weekend and I would imagine that would lead to a, a larger pullback the pullback we've kind of been waiting for on Bitcoin but if this could push up at least back up to 4300 to essentially put in maybe what would be a double top then that could be the catalyst to push Bitcoin up to the 22,500 area we're talking about before they both ultimately roll over. So these are the things we'll be keeping track of. And the last chart that I wanted to just quickly end the video off on is the Bitcoin dominance chart. Now I will leave a link in the description for a very detailed video I put out a few months ago that explains the ins and outs of Bitcoin dominance and as it relates to money flow in and out of the market and in and out of Bitcoins and through altcoins and so forth. So if you don't understand what Bitcoin dominance is, watch that video first. But in general, we know that generally speaking, if Bitcoin dominance is going up, that that's not good for altcoins and when it's going down, uh, that is good for altcoins. So why do I bring that up now? Well, we've been talking about this honestly for a few uh, months really, but we're approaching the major, major, so this is the weekly chart by the way. <clears throat> we're approaching a major, major area where Bitcoin dominance has bounced once, twice, three, four times. And each time it's not only bounced, it's led to a major, major bounce in each case, right? Especially from 2021 on, mid-May of 2021 to current price, right? So we have two scenarios. Scenario one is that at some point we approach this zone at about 39.5 to about 45, and we break down and flip it as resistance, and we just start trending down to areas we've, I shouldn't say never seen before, because we have seen areas lower back here in uh, 2018 so it's not impossible however keep just to give you context this lowest we ever went in 2018 was basically the end of the bull market of 20 uh, 2017 2018 uh, bitcoin had already had its blow off top but this was the altcoins having its final alt season this giant alt season and then they had their blow off top and then they began their major retrace so that would kind of be in correlation with time frame wise this first big one here you know as far as that was our major altcoin season of this last bull run um you know rejection kind of the same place same place it's just we didn't get maybe as low on the bitcoin dominance but you can see historically that about 39.5 to 45 is a major major zone of support and anytime that's trending higher you have two options either bitcoin's going higher with it and so Bitcoin is bouncing and it just means more money is flowing into Bitcoin than altcoins. That's not complete doom for altcoins. It does mean they're likely to stay stable and just more of the money is going into Bitcoin. That's not quite as bad as scenario two. Scenario two is that Bitcoin is rolling over as its dominance is going up. And that just means that altcoins are getting dumped. It means money is coming out of the market altogether. But the reason why the dominance would be going up for Bitcoin, even if it's coming down, is because money is coming out of altcoins at a faster rate than Bitcoin, which means Bitcoin's remaining is holding a bigger piece of the percentage of the market still, even as it's losing its own value. Again, if this is confusing to you, please watch my video. I'll leave the link in the description for Bitcoin dominance. But anyway, I bring that up to say that if you scroll into the four hour time frame we're basically in this large large falling wedge that we've been in 
um, since uh, early July. And we're approaching that major, major zone of support. So if you're wanting to be holding on to altcoins or say that's what you prefer to trade or hold, you know, if you've got a long-term outlook, outlook, that's fine. Um, I think overall, as long as you're holding on to the right coins, that you should come out ahead in the long run. So I'm not going to tell you, hey, sell your coins. But if you're if you're trading coins or doing short to midterm holds, this is just where I would, you know, say exercise a bit more caution because we are likely, you know, history would say we're likely to bounce somewhere in this zone. So keep an eye on this wedge because especially if we do roll over just a little bit more, which means money flow is flowing still into altcoins a little bit more than Bitcoin. If you see a breakout of this wedge and it's flipping this wedge as support, at that point, if it starts to trend higher, you have to kind of assume this is the beginning of Bitcoin season. Now, does that mean Bitcoin's going up? Not necessarily, but it does mean that it's Bitcoin's gonna hold its value better than altcoins are. And a lot of the altcoins could be in for an even bigger dump than they've already experienced in the past you know, calendar year. So just something to keep an eye on and I'll keep you guys posted over the coming days and maybe it might even take another week or two to, to fully play out. All right, pat yourself on the back. You made it all the way to the end. As always, guys, if you're liking the content, please remember to do me a huge favor and like and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow. It's T-A-I